I've been hoarse since Christmas, but uh, I've been praying and taking care of myself this week. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a, of a, a sabbatical, uh, that which means I just stay home and I try not to talk very much. So my voice is on the mend, it's getting better. Uh, Aaron, thank you for, uh, and, and the singers, thank you for covering for me until that day comes back when I get my superpowers back. <laughs> but right now, I'm just a normal human being. <laughs> Give me a week and a half. <laughs> I'll be a superhero again. Um, so uh, thank you so much for singing in my stead, congregation. Amen? Amen. Thank you for singing in my stead. Um, there's a word from heaven for you. I can't talk a little bit, though. My wife's back there laughing. She's just, she's, 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 I hear that gravelly voice. That's my Barry White voice. <laughs> Suz Suzanne. Suzanne. I'm really not very good at these things. <laughs> not very good at that kind of voice, but so I'll leave, I'll leave that alone. Um, people with a vision, I'm talking to you. I want to take the word vision, I want to, I want to, just reel it back in from how it has been used so much. Um, I think it has been used um, poorly. Um, vision, by my definition, and we're going to use my definition tonight, is that which the Lord shows of himself to his people. Amen? You might not like that definition, so next week you preach, all right? <laughs> if you preach, you get to make up your own definitions. <laughs> so you let me know, and you can make your definitions up, and you can preach. But uh, since I'm preaching tonight, we're going to use my definition. <laughs> Biblically speaking, vision is what the Lord shows us of his son, what the Lord shows his people of his son. Now, there are things that God is going to show you under the umbrella of the capital V vision. Amen? Amen. The only thing God is showing you is Jesus. Now, under that umbrella, God is going to show you some things in detail. He's going to show you some things in the minutiae of life. He's going to show you some things in the mundane day to day. Because God's intention is that you and I uh, live our life where everything we do is everything we do is out from the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Uh, however we serve, it, you're, you're, the Spirit is not given to you for the day when you stand in front of a lot of people and do stuff. Amen? The Spirit is not giving you the day when you preach or when everybody knows that you're a prophet or everybody knows that the Spirit is giving you for the day when you go to work tomorrow. Amen? The Spirit is giving you tonight when you go home and do what you need to do in the evening before you, before you lay down tonight. The Spirit is giving to you that when you wake up tomorrow morning, that, that you look at that day and, and, and you look at the day as God looks at it, as an opportunity for Christ Jesus. You never know whether it's going to be a pretty mundane day or whether there'll be things that happen during the day that test you. Every day something happens that tests men far beyond that they ever thought they would be tested. I mean, if you read the news, you just know that the, the happenstance in people's lives, the things that happen in people's lives are things that they could never have planned on. I, my heart was so broken yesterday when I, when I just read an article on a 14-year-old boy who had been missing. And I couldn't, I couldn't even read the article. I just really read the, just the, the, uh, 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 the synopsis. He had gotten stuck in a chimney. And I just, I just wanted to break down in tears because I can imagine what his struggle was like in that chimney, trying to get himself out of however he got himself down in there or up in there. I don't have any idea what he was thinking. And I just thought of how trapped many people are. And the enemy can trap us as that poor boy was trapped in that chimney 
and, and literally, literally snuff the life out of us, even as, no matter how hard we struggle, we can't get ourselves free. And it broke my heart to think about that family and that boy, and that family looking for their son and discover him having lost his life in a chimney. I don't know whether he got some idea, but foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, amen? And, um, but it made me look to the Lord and ask him for the vision, for the wisdom uh, that we as a people would be set free and not trapped in anything of the devil, not trapped in anything in the world, not trapped in anything of self where we cannot get out, where whom the Son is set free is indeed free, amen? And, and, and my heart just went out to that family who did not, was not able to discover that boy and to set him free in the struggle he must have had. Um, and who, I don't know how long it was, I couldn't bring myself to read the article, but it, but it, really, it really broke my heart. What, but when I look at you, what I see is the people who have been freed. Um, a people who have been freed and a people who fight the fight day in and day out to remain free. Amen? Yes. Amen. It's a fight that's worth fighting. To, to be free, to remain free because you know the enemy is doing everything he can to rob, to kill, and to destroy. To rob you of your joy. Uh, uh, to, to, if he can't kill you outright, uh, uh, to kill every opportunity that you, that you have and the hope that you have within you to destroy the works of your hands, to, 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 to bring things down to, to his level, to bring you out of the heavenlies and bring you down to this world where he does have the kind of sway over people that traps them and that sucks the life out of them. You, though, have the life of Jesus Christ. And my job is to do my very best to feed that life of Christ that's in you. That's who I'm speaking to. When I'm speaking to you, I'm not simply speaking to you. I'm speaking to the spirit who dwells in you. So when I talk to you about vision today, I'm not talking about anything of aggrandizement. You know, when, when we look at, oh, my vision is I see myself. I'm not speaking to personal greatness. If God decides to make you personally great, that's his business. Okay, I'm not speaking to that though. I'm speaking to, I'm speaking to the man and woman who will humble themselves in the sight of the Lord that he might lift them up. Okay? I know you have hopes and dreams. I'm not speaking to those hopes and dreams. I'm speaking to the person that is filled with the Holy Spirit and the person who is willing to let the Spirit who fills them live the life of Jesus through them. <laughs> I'm speaking to that person. I'm speaking to the man and woman of faith. I'm speaking to the man and woman that hears God and believes God. Because faith simply hears God and believes what it heard. And, and faith simply hears God, believes what God said, and then does what God commands. That is a complete picture of faith, and that's who I'm talking to. I'm talking to those who in this room who might right now feel like that boy in the chimney, you've been struggling, struggling, struggling to get out of this particular place, to get out of this particular unpleasantness. And I want to speak a word of freedom to you. And that's the definition I want to use when I speak of vision tonight. Because you are people with a vision. You are people God has spoken to. You are people God has shown himself to. You are people God has shown his son to. I never want you to forget what you saw. Your people, God has shown you who you are. You've seen yourself right side up. You've seen yourself with your hands lifted. You've seen yourself, and you've seen what God has shown you of yourself. And I never want you to forget or to go back and be less than what God has shown you. And I don't want you to go back, period. I don't want you to go back and be with people who were and, 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 and for the seasons past or, or years past or things past because those things are not what God has shown you. God, everything God has shown you is before you, is in front of you, not to the side, not to the left, not to the right, not under you, but in front of you. And so you are a people with a vision, and I'm speaking to the vision. I'm speaking to the you that God has shown you when you were closest to him. Everybody say, look toward heaven. Read this with me. It's in Genesis it's two verses, two quick verses. Genesis 15, a passage you're probably familiar with. Uh, and then he, speaking of the Lord, read it with me. Then he brought him outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you're able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. 
the two people in this passage are God the Father and Abraham. And God showing Abraham something. God showing Abraham something of himself. God revealing Abraham to himself as the father of many nations. Abraham and Sarah could not have children, as you know. Now, they tried to get clever, as you know. Anybody here ever tried to get clever? <laughs> they tried to get creative. Your creativity is a wonderful thing when it is directed by the spirit of the living God. But when it is not, it will get you in trouble. You cannot get yourself out of it. It will cause you to write a check that you really, really wish you don't have to cash. So uh, that's a word, that's a prophetic word for somebody in this room. Don't be creative, be obedient. Don't be creative. Be, say it to yourself. Don't be creative. Be, creative. be, obedient. be obedient. God's the creator. Let him create. Anything I create is going to be a problem. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anything I create, I can, I, I don't know about you, but I can pull a whole lot of, I got lots of ideas. Got some ideas there. I got some ideas there. I got some ideas here. I got some ideas here. I got some ideas in my pockets. I got some ideas. I pull it out of my sock. Got a lot of wherewithal. But anything that, 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 the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift comes down, down. Does it come out from me? Comes out from him. Comes down. So if it's a good and perfect thing you want, anybody here want good and perfect things? Yes. Then you need to let it come down. You need to receive. You need to put yourself in a position to receive. And here's Abraham in a position to hear God and hear God tell him something that is otherwise impossible except that God said it. There are things that God is showing you that are otherwise impossible except that he said it. Because no, you're not good enough. No, you're not tall enough. No, you don't have enough money. No, you don't have enough gas in the car. No, 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 your job doesn't pay that much. No, 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 you don't have enough people. No, 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 you don't have enough time. You're too old for that. Yes, you are. But God said that this old man, <laughs> God said that this old man, count the stars if you're able to number them. Anybody ever seen a real clear sky with no light pollution? Try counting the stars. Just try. Just try. Count the stars. So shall your descendants be. But Lord, my wife is barren, and I'm 90 years old. Count the stars, but look toward heaven. Tell your neighbor, look toward heaven. Look toward heaven. See, God wants to free you and me from small thinking. It's a trap. It's a trap. The trap of small thinking. Small thinking calculates things according to my own abilities and toward, and toward what I can see, my own vision, my own resources, what I can put my hands on, what I could wrap my brain around. And God wants to free us from that. Beloveds, we were thinking and living like that before we became Christians. Why would we continue to think and live like that after we become Christians and sons and daughters of the living God? And this is why God is showing us Abraham. This is how he's dealt with men since Genesis. This is Genesis. This is the beginning. This is God's dealing with his children from the beginning. Our father. Abraham. He's called Father Abraham for a reason, because he's your father by faith. You believe because he believed. He taught us what it was to hear God and believe him when everything around him said, that can never happen. You ever, you ever told yourself, that ain't going to happen? <laughs> I've said that a few times to myself. That ain't going to happen. But God shows you things that cannot happen unless he makes them happen. I can show you things. I, we, can, we can develop our own vision. We can write our vision statement. You know, for a long time, uh, and still to this day, uh, there's some teachings when you take leadership classes or leadership training or, or pastoral training or those types of things, they tell you to write your vision statement, your mission statement, and what other statements? There's one more. Your vision, your mission, your, your um, 
um, there, there, there's one where there were three of them, but, but so the vision statement is, of course, you know, what do you see? Your mission is, what are you going to do? And I see life a certain way, and I've set myself to do certain things. But I'm not talking about that small V vision. I'm talking about the capital V vision. What has God shown me? And what has God told me to do? Because God not only comes to give his people vision, he comes to give them direction. What he first does is he gives you a vision, he gives you a heart. He's expanding your heart by showing you things that he sees. So we can't limit God in our minds, and we do whenever we elevate our circumstance instead of increasing our faith. You can do one of the two, you can't do both. You can't elevate your circumstance and your faith. You can't look at things by what you cannot do and then turn around and do the impossible. Can't do both. You have to, it, you, we have to make a decision. Are we going to limit God or are we going to let God? Are we going to tell him, but Lord, I'm 90. Now, I don't blame you if you told the Lord that. The Lord already knows, though. Understand, whatever you tell him, he already knows. He told you you were going to have children, Abraham. He knows how old you are. By the way, people have children all the time and never talk to God once. We will know how to have children. He didn't have to tell Abraham how to, how to do this. He knew how to do this. But when he knew how to do it, he wasn't able to do it because they were barren. She was barren. And now it is, he's to the point where it's like, the, I, I, there is no more life in my seed. And there's no more life in her womb. Perhaps God is waiting for us to die to our own abilities and devices before he pours out life. Just perhaps. I don't think we have a good, we always have a good grasp on how self-sufficient we are. As a matter of fact, self-sufficiency is a god in our country. We know that. Have you ever thought that people should pull themselves up by their bootstraps? You ever thought that? Why do you think that? Because they told you that's what you're supposed to think. That that's what people are supposed to do. They're supposed to pull themselves up. Well, you can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps if you don't have boots. Now, here's Abraham. He did not have boots. There was no pulling himself up by anything in order to become a father. Now, once again, when they did get creative, they, they, he, they ended up having a child whose descendants would end up being the enemy of the child of promise and is that way to this day. That way, to this day, Ishmael's children and Isaac's children are enemies to this day. To this day. That's what happens when we get creative. So God is not calling you to creativity. He's calling you past your circumstances to increase your faith. And the way he increases your faith is calling you to something that cannot be done apart from faith. Sometimes I think it's a blessing that I finally gave up hope. Because now I can let go of that and, get, and get, hold on, to, grasp on to something greater, something larger. You think, you think, you think, that, that, that Abraham and, and Sarah hadn't given up hope because when the Lord came to them and told them they were going to have a child, they laughed. They laughed. Why? Because they're like, pfft, pfft. they wanted to believe, but it was too good to believe, and it was too crazy to believe. Don't think you're crazy when God says something crazy to you. Now, here's not what I'm saying, because there's a lot of Christians running around saying crazy things that say that God said them. That's not what I'm saying, that if it's crazy, it's got to be God said that. No, 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 no. Not a crazy thing that you came up with. But God's crazy is to increase your faith. Folks crazy is to bless themselves. Always. Always to elevate themselves. Always to make themselves more spiritual. Always to increase themselves. God, when he says something that seems really crazy to you, 
is saying it to increase your faith. Has anybody ever come to you when you were at your lowest point and tell you how wonderful you are? Has anybody ever told you, saw some things in you that you had stopped believing for in yourself? Anybody ever encouraged you when you had pretty much given up on that thing? That's God increasing your faith. And so he comes to Abraham when he knew he was far past fathering children. Now I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit in Abraham's story because this is how good God is. The scripture says Abraham believed in the Lord. And he accounted it to him for righteousness. So you know that God woke up Abraham's body one more time because a 90-year-old's body is going to need to be woken up again if he's going to father children, right? Well, Abraham not only had a son with Sarah, but when Sarah passed, Abraham married again. He had a whole bunch of kids. It's in the book of Genesis. <laughs> His, his wife after Sarah name was Keturah. And between Keturah and, and possibly her concubines, he had quite a few more children. So when God wakes something up, he wakes it up. <laughs> Amen? I mean, just read it tonight when you get home. <laughs> go to Genesis when you get to the end, to, to the, uh, after Sarah died. It'll tell you that he married Keturah. And it'll tell you all the kids that he had. had and, and he had to send them all away. He sent them away. Yes, honey, you want to read it? Uh, no. It's, it's, it, I don't know exactly the chapter, but, but it's, it's um, uh, if, if you look at, yes, Paul's on it. My wife's on it. So I don't know, baby, you tell me. You got your Bible open, right? Okay, read a little bit of it where it talks, talks about that. six sons and that, that they usually don't name the daughters so there's six sons and possibly daughters also and they all had children and he, he truly became and he he had to send them he ended up sending them away uh, once they became a certain age sending them away so that um, uh, they, they wouldn't be um, in the presence of his son Isaac the child of promise and um, you see beloved is nobody yes honey yeah That's more kids. Then he gave, yeah. And he sent them away with gifts, but he gave all he had to Isaac because Isaac's a child of promise. So the reason I say that to you, beloveds, is because God said to him he was going to be the father, um, and said, said that his descendants will be as the stars. You will not be able to number them. And certainly with all those kids and all their kids over the history of the Middle East and, and, and everywhere else that God has sent those folks, uh, he certainly has more descendants, and that doesn't even count the spiritual descendants because every Christian is a spiritual descendant of Abraham. It, it is said that when God said, we, he told him to look at the, uh, the count the stars, um, the stars of the heaven are, are, are said to, to, to refer to us. And the children of promise, and those, and, and then the, the then the, 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 those who, who the, the descendants who maybe have not even come to Christ are like the sand on the seashore. But the stars in the heaven are those of us who shine with the light of Christ, and and so uh, he's had. Uh, if you were to count the descendants of Abraham, you would not be able to count them, because God said you wouldn't be able to count them. He says, count the stars if you are able to number them. So shall your descendants be. I, once again, I wanted to reel all these teachings back from the commercialization of faith. 
which says, you see, you see what God told Abraham that you can go out and you can, because God's word and he's Abraham's father, so you can go out and you can be great and you can take this word and you can, ah. That's not the point. That's not the point. What God did in Abraham's life was a particular thing. What God is doing in your life is a particular thing. Okay? And, and, and how God multiplies you and how God blesses you and how God uses you is a unique thing. He's, we're giving this, we're giving this so that you and I would learn to hear God's word and take him at his word like our father did. And God counted that to him for righteousness. So your great miracle may look very small to the next person because it's not about them. It's about you and it's about God. How God uses you may be very insignificant to a lot of people, but it's not about being significant to other people. It's about being faithful to God. And God sees where you are. He sees who you are. He knows what you need. And he has promised to not leave you nor forsake you. Not only has he promised that, but he's promised that if you believe like your father Abraham believed, you too, it'll be counted to you too for righteousness sake. And there is a blessing on the righteous. Come on, church. There's a blessing on the righteous. There's a blessing on your righteousness. So for us, for us, our faith is only increased by the determination to cling to God and his word and to let him have the final say in all things. The name of Jesus must truly become the name above all names in my thinking. And my most sincere efforts get lost in the possibilities of his sovereign will, his grace, and his kindness. Look toward heaven. Beloved, if, if you draw near and God promises that it makes you promises that only he has the power to accomplish. He's not only the promise giver, he's a promise keeper. And he alone has the ability to make all things work together for good for those who love him in the lives of his people. And he alone sees the beginning and the end and every detail in between. Faith in God is the only basis, by the way, that we have a relationship with him. See, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know, it says that in Hebrews 11, 4. It's impossible to please him, for he and she who come to him must believe that he is and that he rewards those who seek him diligently. Amen? When we believe him, he is free to do what could never be done otherwise. There are things that God can do through believers that he cannot and will not ever do through anybody else. You are anointed, beloved. That means that the presence and the power of the Spirit is a treasure in you and on you. You are anointed. You're not only... Now, my thing is, when I tell you to pay attention to life, pay attention to the anointing on your life. There are things for which you are anointed. Pay attention to them. There are things that you not only do and do well because you have expertise and talent and skill, by the way, those are given to you by God. Or things that you've learned to do well, well, your ability to learn to do things well is given to you by God. Okay, things that you become um, very, very good at or successful at, well, that, that good success, any good success is given to you by God. Amen. I'm not simply talking about that. I'm talking about those things, the way God especially in touched you and endowed you to bring a particular, a, something particular into his house, something particular everywhere you go, something particular in your relationships that, that, that is you, that is, that is just very, very much how God uses and touches and changes things through you. There, you, you we have to get out from underneath ourselves and look to heaven. So my question to you, I have some questions for you tonight, and you are free because I don't need to do all the talking tonight. <laughs> you are free to, to speak up about this now and, and let this be a, a family conversation. If you were to look toward heaven today, how would your thinking change? When he told Abraham to look toward heaven, he changed his thinking. He showed him something. If you were to look at what God is showing you 
today. Just lift your eyes. What do you think? How, do, how would your thinking change if you were to look to God today, to look at what God is showing you? What is the difference between what you've been seeing and what God would show you if you look up? Have you been looking down so much that you don't even know what's up there? Have you been so focused on yourself and your shortcomings or yourself and your skills, your talents, or yourself and your accomplishments, or yourself and your bank account, or yourself and whether it's good or, or bad or indifferent, has your focus been on heaven? And if you look toward heaven, what do you think God would show you? How would your thinking change if you look toward heaven? I'll start off with this. When I look toward heaven, the first thing that sets in my heart and mind and settles me is that God's in control. Because sometimes the way I think and the way I worry, you think God wasn't in control. <laughs> so it's that simple. I'm not asking for any. That I think is profound, but I'm not asking you to, you don't have to say anything profound. I'm just asking you, what's the difference in you when you look toward heaven? There's um, Pastor Sue in the back. You can start with her. Thank you, Fernando, for running the mic around. Looking toward heaven, um, I think that happens for me when I'm reading the word and I'm getting the Lord's perspective. And so when I look toward heaven, whatever quote-unquote problems they are just become small. They're just okay. really small compared to looking toward heaven. Mm -hmm. Who else? May breath. You can, okay. you can, I, I trust you guys now. You can hold the mic now. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I can't touch it. Hey, yes, you can touch it. You can touch it. Okay, all right. <laughs> you, you start you preaching. You change the rules You start preaching, Rafa's is going to turn the mic off. Right? Okay. <laughs> I actually have actually done that recently, right. and the result is my to be more careful to intercede rather than, than try to... Um, actually say things or do things to affect what I see around me. My place is to intercede. And that's great. You know that's what I mean? really good. Not to have, not to think I am influencing anything. So, that's really good. Yeah, just intercede. Stick with that. Thank you. Who else? When you look toward heaven or, or even look at the last time when you may have been looking elsewhere, and then God got a hold of you and you looked up to him and gave it to him. How did that change you? What happens when you look toward heaven? Less fear. Less fear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Aaron. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, just just today, um, I was, I don't even know why, but I just started to feel, and it was the afternoon, maybe I didn't a sandwich and a nap, but I just started to feel, you know, just, just and maybe I, I was, you know, absorbed into things around the house and my own, like, again, you talk about ourselves and just our immediate severe sphere and what's right there. And um, what looking he to heaven looks like for me is getting out on a prayer walk. And so um, I got out on that prayer walk and uh, and just, just was able to give that, you know, just give things, give my mm -hmm. life, give the immediate things that were on my mind to him, and I felt lighter. Um, so just just the burden of having that on my mind was lifted. And so... Amen. Yeah. Amen. Martha? I thought I saw your hand. I thought I did. <laughs> okay, I just... I'm just... Uh, he was looking at heaven and he saw your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to say something now, so... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was thinking about it. I get anxious a lot. So, um, what was it? Yesterday, I was anxious and I did stop and, and looked to, towards the Lord and just gave it to him. Amen. Because usually, if I go with my anxiety, 
then I go with my actions, yes. and then with my feelings, and then yes. hey, it goes, oh, that's, it that's goes pretty, wrong. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty lethal. <laughs> Worries. Yeah, so this time I... Feelings. <laughs> yeah, so this time I really looked to the Lord and, and said, I, give it, I surrender it to you, Lord. Amen. Let your will be done. Amen. And he actually did, did move. <laughs> uh, yes, he, do, he does that. That's and, and, you again. know, <laughs> I, I, I've been asking for that peace that mm -hmm. I know. I know his peace. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been missing that peace. Okay. So this time when I surrender it and I've been asking, Lord, I want your peace again. I want to feel, I want to be what you were saying, be exactly. I know where, mm -hmm. where you're at and I know how that feels. I mm -hmm. want to be back there again. And when I gave him my anxiety um, and I gave it to him, he gave me that peace. Yeah. And it, was, it, it felt good to be there again. I just have to do that more often. Yes. <laughs> yes, Martha, thank you. Thank you so much. Did I see a hand in the back? Did I see somebody? Yes. It's great. Oh. All the oh. way in the back. <laughs> um, I deal with international sales, so I have to do a lot of uh, concentration on details, make sure everything works right. I'm there alone. And I checked out of the hotel a little late, got in the cab, realized I was probably going to miss the flight. And then I realized, you know what? This is in God's hands. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about this. Mm -hmm. I started listening to what uh, the cabbie was playing, and it was uh, Brazilian praise and worship. <laughs> and I started singing, and we started talking about it. I got out of the cab. He gave me the CD. He said, this is a gift. Wow. Take it, please. Wow. I get in the airport. The flight was delayed. I got <laughs> <laughs> so to God, don't worry about stuff. God's got it. God's got it. That's cool. I like that. I ran into. I, I was paying a bill uh, not long ago. It was, it was. It was. It was like the last. Hey, if you don't pay this, we're going to cut off everything, uh, and it's going to take you ten years to get it back on. All right. So. And uh, and I you know I've got there in time and everything to take care of it, but I'm, I'm standing there and I walk up to the gentleman uh, who was um, who, who was uh, uh, going to help me there, and I looked at his name tag. His name tag was Caleb. And I always I love the name Caleb because because uh, uh, Caleb's one of my heroes. The Bible says that he wholly followed the Lord because you know he was one of the two of, out of the twelve spies that came back with a good report. He came back and said, we can do this we can, because God had given him a vision. He saw, he saw the land. He knew they were giants. He knew, he knew, all, he knew all that. He knew they, they were outnumbered and outgunned. He knew that. But God had given him a vision. And he says, and what, what he saw as opposed to what the, uh, he and Joshua saw as opposed to what the other ten saw. The ten saw one thing. Joshua and Caleb saw something else. The difference is Joshua and Caleb were looking toward heaven. You know, when it comes to my ministry, I see what God is showing me. Okay, I don't know what, well, I do know, but I don't care what other people see. <laughs> I care what I see. I see you. I see you. And so my joy is in what God has shown and given me. And what God showed and gave Caleb. So I was encouraged just looking at his name tag. It just encouraged me because it made me think of Caleb. Also made me think of Caleb because Caleb was an old man when he was given his allotment of land. And Joshua was dividing the land. And he came to Joshua and he said, I'm 85. Don't matter. I want that mountain that's occupied. I'm going to go up. I, can, I, I have the same strength I had in my 20s. And as I was as a youth, nothing deteriorated at all. Now, it could have just been an old man just talking. Right. I, I, you know, it, it could have been, you know. You, but, but in his mind and in his heart, that's where he was. He was like, man, because he, once again, he saw what God showed him. He saw the land as his. God gave it to him. And he got a special allotment. Apart from all the tribes, he got his own special allotment because he was one of the ones that came back with a good report. 
And so, beloved, God not only has that for you, um, uh, that, that is part of what he's doing among his people, but because your faith, because your faith is notable, notable faith receives a notable reward. God takes notice of your faith. And when you have notable faith, it receives a notable reward. I just looked at Caleb's name. All that occurred to me just looking at his name as, a, as he was taking care of, 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 of my business there. I was just encouraged, and, and, um, and I want you to be encouraged. So um, if I change my name, you know what it's going to be. <laughs> I'm not going to change my name, but if I did, because <laughs> I'll soon be 85. So <laughs> I got a little while, but... but. I got a skeleton of time. If you were to look toward heaven today, what would fade into the background? Current national discussion and environmental discussion and economic discussion. It's when I look up to heaven, it's amazing how quickly God brings my focus back to the immediate things in my immediate proximity like my wife and kids, and, you know, not worrying about, because it's easier for me to get started thinking about, man, I kind of wish I had a little bit bigger place, I wish I had a little bit more money, and then sure. pretty soon I'm like, and the whole world's burning, and like, <laughs> 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 like it just goes from one step is to the other. Is Australia still on the map? Is it, is it still? Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's sunk. Um, <laughs> but, but so, yeah, when I look to heaven, what phases the background is all that other chatter noise, kind of like Mary Beth talked about, and Martha, like you talked about, like the anxiety fades, not the, I can't do anything about these other things, but I'm right here, right now, with these people in front of me. And that's who God's put in front of me. So, Amen. Amen. If you look toward heaven today, what would fade into the background? Uh, Paula raised her kids. Oh. <laughs> it was the, world, the worries of the world. You know what I mean? You worry about finances. You worry about this. You worry about that. It's like total distraction. And the Lord, there's total peace. And when your eyes are focused up that way, you're not thinking of everything else. Mm -hmm. It's just this calm, just like when the first day that I walked in this church, I know that's not, it's, you know, as close as it's going to be towards heaven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when I walked in here, I felt the peace and the love, mm -hmm. and it was like home. Yes, mm -hmm. so I agree. And so um, it totally just, you know, it's everything else is just, Distraction. Satan tries to distract you and all the icky stuff, but my eyes are focused that way. So, thanks, Roxy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Who, who? What would fade into the background if if you if you if you were to look at heaven today? It's Jesse and it's Rocky. When I look toward heaven, I think what fades away are issues amongst my partner, my husband. Um, I'm reminded to be silent because when I speak out of my flesh, when I see an issue that I'm not agreeing with, um, things don't turn out well. And I, I have to be reminded to just look toward heaven and let him deal with the situation and just be quiet and what fades away is an issue a discussion that could have you know mm -hmm. that could have been major mm -hmm. so i just have to remember to just be silent and let him speak for me amen amen, amen. amen. it's rocky and then pastor sue well uh the th thought came to me the other day when i was having my devotion time was that how the father must have really looked forward to the, his time with Adam in the cool of the day when he came and he had unbroken fellowship with mm -hmm. him. And when I look up, uh, just the other day, in fact, look up, he, he let me know that he looks forward to that time when we can have unbroken fellowship. And all of a sudden, some of the things I used to think were so important and so necessary and my heart poured my heart and life and energies into don't seem like such a big deal anymore. And, uh, and, uh, where the real value is reevaluating where, where true value is. And it's, it, it's the people God puts in my life. And, uh, anyway, I'm encouraged 
when things when things begin to happen around and I get my eyes and my focus on that and wonder what's going on and become discouraged or full of despair, I look up and my heart becomes encouraged because it's not about all that stuff. Uh-huh. It's about him. And it's not about America or Russia or North uh-huh. Korea. Or it's uh-huh. about his kingdom, uh-huh. you know. I better give this away before I preach. <laughs> yeah, Rafa's finger was moving toward the, toward the mute button. <laughs> if, you, if you hear music start, that means, you know. That means you <laughs> <laughs> yes, he actually stirred something in my thinking that, you know, absolutely cares and worries go away um, in his presence, but also um, my my agenda, my thoughts in terms of, of how things should be or how people should be or whatever it is that I have in mind um, just bows down um, to his presence because it's, it's, it's not my will and not my way, it's, it's his. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think, I, without even knowing it, we we all have plans and ideas of how things are supposed to be, what's supposed to happen next, who is supposed to do what, how they're supposed to do it, and all of that falls mm-hmm. in His presence. Mm-hmm. For me, it's my fears. Um, they just fade away. Um, I want to encourage you because as, the, as when you look to the Lord, um, he is going to give you what you need. He's going to give you a word. He's going to give you a resource. He, he not only wants you just hanging on, he wants you to give, he wants to give something more of Jesus for you to hang on to. I'm going to share something personal with you. I never do that, I'm so um, <laughs> I do it all the time. Um, I, <laughs> I was praying for myself the other day. I shared this with my wife, and I've shared it just with a couple of other folks because I um, just hadn't had a, had a chance. And I just, uh, But I want to share it with you because um, as your friend and your, your pastor, I want to let you know, um, you know how... Um, just, just how? Because uh, you might ask me, say, well, Pastor, how do you get through so many disappointments with people? How do you get through years and years of challenges? And, and how do you get through disappointments? And how do you get through, how do you stay? And how do you be steady? And how do you love people who don't love you all that good? And how do you, how do you, because, because, you know, when you really pastor folks, it's, it's separate, it's just hard. It's not, it's not easy. Um, and so um, um, I was praying, uh, and the Lord said to me, he said to me clearly, very clearly, um, and I want you to keep this in this room, this between me and you. Um, just, I mean, th- this is not a secret, obviously. I wouldn't be telling you. But uh, this is a conversation between, uh, if anybody else wanted to hear it, they should have been in church. Um, so... <laughs> It's a benefit of you being here on Wednesday nights. Um, the Lord spoke to me. Uh, I was on my face, it was probably 4 o'clock in the morning, and just talking to the Lord, just pouring my heart out and my you know, disappointments and, and, and all that. And the Lord spoke to me. The last thing he said to me just before I got up, he said, as you have exalted my word, so I will exalt you. Now, I've learned not to get up and run wild and loose with a prophetic word. I've learned over the years that to, to hold that thing. Remember the scripture talks about the things that were said to Mary and she held them, yeah. just held them close to her heart. Mm. And I've learned to do that. So I did that with this, but I shared it with my, with my honey later on that morning. And, um, and he gave me two words. The other word was pay close attention to your wife. Two words, two, two three things he told me. And so, um, so I, I said, Lord, I, I, yes, thank you and amen, hallelujah. 
Lord, I want to see that in your word. I just want to see it in your word. I, I, need, I, I need some chapter and verse just, just for me, just to hang on to this. And you remember when I told you the story of the Lord telling me uh, before I came here, the name of my next ministry would be the river. And then I asked him for confirmation and he had a good time with me because uh, my friend sent me an email uh, about three, four days later and the word river was in there about 10 times. And, uh, and he shared, a, he shared a, a, a funny story with me. And, and the Lord, it, it, was, it was a confirmation because it's exactly what I asked the Lord for, for. I wanted to hear that word river. I just wanted to hear it spoken. I wanted it to be spoken over and over again to people who had no idea because I didn't tell anybody that what he said. Well, so that's just kind of, I always ask God to give me a, give me a scripture, a chapter, and a verse to go along with the, the encouragement that he's given me so that I got that I have that to hang on to his word and as well as the, what he's whispered in my ear. So that morning uh, in my, in my devotional reading, I'm, I'm reading and I'm reading and I have an old Testament reading and new Testament reading and I'm reading through the Psalms. Um, and I was in the eighties and usually with my Psalms, if I'm reading the Psalms that morning, I'll just read through the twenties, the thirties, the forties, fifties, sixties, because with the Psalms, you can do that because of the length of that too long. So I was reading in the eighties. So I just said, Lord, I, I just want to see the word exalt. I just want to see it. I just want to see it in your word. In my, in I, in my, I, you know, of course, I could look in a Bible dictionary and find the word exalt all over. It's, it's fine. But I just wanted to see it. And in, 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 I just wanted to keep walking the walk I was walking and just asking me. He didn't have to show it to me. Didn't change what he said. But I just needed this because I don't like hearing what I want to hear from God and, 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 and not realizing that in my flesh, I can hear what I want to hear from God. <laughs> and I can run around telling everybody, that's the word of God. That's the word of God. No, that was probably just me. Anybody ever told you that was the word of God that wasn't really the word of God? Well, I, I always want to be sure that that's not. It's just, it's, so I ask God because I'm responsible to you. I'm not just responsible to myself. Even my family, responsible to a church. So when I say God said something, I wait and I ask. I do it for me personally as well as those that I love. So I'm reading in Psalm the 80s. I read Psalm 80, no exalted. Psalm 81, no. Nope. Psalm 82, uh-uh. Psalm 83, mm -mm. Psalm 84, no. Nope. All right, I'm going to sleep now, Jesus. I'm tired. It's, five, five, it's 4.30 in the morning, Lord. My eyes are tired. And I said, I said Lord, I'm good. I'm just, and it was like something inside of me said, keep reading. I read Psalm 85, Psalm 86, Psalm 87. 88, 89. So Lord, you just, he wanted me to read the whole, all, all, all the 80s, obviously. And in Psalm 89, it says this, verse 15. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name, they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness, they are exalted. For you are the glory of their glory. Uh, for you are the glory of their strength. And in your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord and our king to the Holy One of Israel. Then you spoke in a vision to your Holy One and said, I have given help to one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him with whom my hand shall be established. Also, my arm shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague those who hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name, his horn shall be exalted. That's what I said. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He spoke that word to me because I wait on him. And at four or five, whatever ridiculous hour in the morning, I'm not saying that's your hours. Those are my hours. It's quiet and I hear from him. I've been hearing from him for years, decades now. That's what I do. And I knew he had spoken. And though I had to trudge a little bit, I got my confirmation. 
and look to heaven, beloveds. Look to heaven. Look to him. He will speak. Um, your, your relationship with God is worth all the effort. It's worth it. As you know, I don't sleep anymore. I'm, an, I'm pretty much an insomniac, but I don't consider it insomnia. I consider it an opportunity. Um, I just learned to pray, and that's the Lord. I, I, I'm laying there this morning in the bed. It's 3.30, and I wake up. And it takes me about two or three minutes to realize I'm awake because I dream a lot, too. So I, I'm laying there, and I realize, oh, I'm awake. <laughs> and I peek up at the clock. It's 3.22. Okay, must be, must be God time. <laughs> Beloveds, you, like I say, everybody's life, the anointing works in your life, in, in my life, uh, in, in unique ways. Um, the time that you spend, the, the listening that you do, the space that you give, God will take it. If you give it to him, he'll take it. And in that space, he will do that which only he can do. And he will speak to you. He said he would. Blessed are those who wait daily at my gates. Blessed are you. I'll pour out my wisdom on you. I'll pour out my spirit on you. So when he does, don't be surprised. If you were to look toward heaven today, how would your faith increase? How would your faith increase if you were to look toward God? What I, what I mean is, is Jesus, the, the disciples asked Jesus, we want to increase our faith. You know, sometimes I think we ask Jesus for things we don't know what we're asking for. <laughs> because faith is not a romantic notion. It's, uh, it's not a fun thing. It's not, it's not an emotional thing. It's not something that we can ever ourselves um, get our arms around. It is a God thing. It is God using his methods as it pertains to your spirit because your spirit is the only part of you that is elastic enough to receive all that God has given you and more and more and more and more and more. So what they're saying when they ask God, when they ask Jesus to um, increase their faith, what they're asking is, Increase my spiritual capacity. In, 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 increase my spiritual capacity. You know, elasticize my spirit. You know, when we walk in the flesh, our spirits become dry and brittle and hard and small. And God can't do much in there. But when we give ourselves to God, then he immediately touches and he softens our hearts. And he softens our thinking. He quiets the voices. And he, and, he, and he draws you close to himself. He settles so that he can actually communicate with you cleanly and clearly. And so as he's increasing our faith, talk to me just briefly. we got 10 minutes. Anybody that wants to share. And then putting their eyes on Jesus and their faith increasing. What do you believe God for? And what do you have peace now? that in the past you didn't have peace and you didn't believe God for. How has looking to the Lord increased your faith? Um, I would say that it kind of, it's quieted me like to be still and be in a um, just quiet mm -hmm. time and know that while during that quiet time, I'm with him, and it increased my faith in just knowing that he's in control. Mm -hmm. And just whatever he has said, it increased my faith to be and do whatever he has said. And it changes everything. It, it just strengthens me from the inside and mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Just whatever he has said, 
and it's definitely in the realm of where he has placed me. Um, here, this season, it has been strengthened. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Constance. Thank you, Constance. Uh, yes, can I say something? Mm -hmm. um, I, I am a self-employee, and uh, what every time I, God always, I depend on looking at, up in God. And I I do worry. Sometimes I'm like, how is the, how this year is gonna be? Or, mm -hmm. or my body's feeling this. My father, but by lifting my eyes to God and looking to heaven, always there is something to calm me down and relax me. And I, I've been dependent from Him for six years, and He's not gonna let me down. No. So I always have to keep looking, and He increase my faith by trusting him with all my heart with all I have and know Amen. that my family is blessed Amen. so he will not disbless my family because my family is already blessed so I, just by looking at heaven I just feel more comfortable and more more, more calm Amen it's, uh, two people Sue Pastor Sue and Daryl I think one thing that blesses me um, in looking to heaven and faith being stirred and increased is um, in looking to heaven to see how personal he, he is um, with, with each of us. He, um, the depth of his knowledge for us, the, the depth of his care, um, that just always um, uh, encourages me and and increases my faith in believing that he's got me uh -huh. um, and so uh, yeah because the adversary wants to say the exact opposite and so uh -huh. and Daryl Um, I find increased faith in completed work. Okay. Um, when I'm pressing and I get the work done, I feel better. I feel more faithful. I feel like I, I've actually did something um, that I can give the Lord and that I, I can feel good about myself that I've, you know, endured that. Um, so that increases my faith to, to, to do more stuff, to get more work done. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to remind you in closing, um, just a specific word that, that goes along with everything that we said uh, uh, so that our faith looks like something. Um, respond with excellence. We, we talked about that a few weeks ago on a Wednesday night. Um, respond with excellence, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, sometimes things come at us that are not pleasant. Um, sometimes things come at us that are pleasant. It, whatever it is, whatever the challenge, whatever the opportunity, um, respond with excellence. You are excellent servants of the Lord your God. Okay, respond with excellence. Um, take the opportunities that God has given you, and sometimes opportunities just disguise themselves as just, just a hard task. You know, but that that that's that hard task is an opportunity for you to respond excellently. There were some times uh, over this last season I, um, that I didn't respond as excellently as I would like to have, um, you know, in dealing with my parents and those types of things and difficulties that you have with dealing with older parents, of which I am one, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> you know, dealing with... <laughs> <laughs> dealing with dealing with mine, uh, uh, and and that there was some just some bumps, some difficulties that I had, and, and I just realized that 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 displeasure that I had, you know, kind of came out in how I communicated with them, and um, and I just was disappointed with myself. I didn't respond excellently. I respond emotionally. So, beloveds, respond excellently, not emotionally. Your emotions are great. You just can't follow them down the street because if you do <laughs> you'll respond poorly they're great they inform you uh, but they're not to lead you okay um, don't respond emotionally respond excellently don't don't only respond intellectually 
uh, uh, my thoughts and God's thoughts are not the same. Amen. Uh, uh, respond spiritually. Respond. And when you respond spiritually, you respond excellently. Amen. So respond with love. Respond with joy. Love is the best revenge. Amen. It's the best revenge. If you hear somebody say that, tell them to stop it because the pastor said it. <laughs> it is. It, it is. It's a bad. And another one that I, 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 I am, am cultivating is love is a dish best served warm. But anyway, uh, <laughs> let me stop while I'm ahead, right? <laughs> I'll stop with the quotes. But, uh, but, but yeah, uh, respond with love. Respond spiritually. If you respond spiritually, you will respond excellently. And if you respond um, according to the skills that God has given you, um, if you respond according to the, the grace and the gifts God has given you, you respond excellently. So uh, thank you for being the excellent employees you are, the excellent leaders you are, the excellent servants that you are, um, the excellent uh, husbands and wives that you are, the excellent singles that you are, um, the excellent uh, musicians and, and teachers that you are, uh, and, and, and the excellent ushers that you are, and security team that you are. You know, respond to every request with Excellence responds spiritually, and that is God's excellence. Um, that that's what that's what us looking toward heaven looks like. It looks like when we look toward heaven, when we're looking toward heaven, our eyes on the Lord, we will respond well. We will respond excellently because we will respond spiritually, and we will do what Abraham did, which was believe God. Amen. Amen. And it'll be accounted to you. God calls you righteous. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the church of Jesus Christ. I thank you. It is the most precious, precious, precious entity in the universe, dear God, uh, because Jesus died for us, so it must be precious. Dear God, uh, you're speaking things to our hearts. You're doing things among us. The scripture says that even the angels desire to look into, dear God. And, uh, and so, Father, I thank you so much that, that each and, in each and every life here, um, there's a precious hand of God. Uh, shaping um, and, and, and making us into the vessels that, uh, that, that, that you consider worthy for the housing of your spirit. Dear God, you said that my life was going to be a home for the Holy Spirit. You said that my heart was going to be, be a home for God himself, the Holy Spirit. And it is so because you said it. And dear God, the things you're doing inside of us that, that cannot be explained, that cannot in, in, any way, in any way be controlled or things that, 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 that cannot be calculated because you are God and, and you are sovereign and thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in my heart. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in the hearts in this room. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in this church corporately and in each, each and every one of us individually. Dear God, have your way. Do in us what only God can do like you did for Abraham, what only God can do. We are the children of Abraham. And so, therefore, that's our expectation, that he who has begun a good work in us will complete that work. We're confident of this, that you begun it and you will finish it. Dear God, you are the alpha and omega of our faith. Dear God, the beginning and the end. Thank you, Lord God. All of our streams are in you, Lord God. Until we meet again, Father God, enjoy yourself with our lives. Have your way. Do what you would do, and we will give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I love you all. See you Sunday.